Good evening, everybody. It's Nick Thompson here, the gut doctor, they call me. And thanks to our friends at Vermex, uh, we are going to be talking about puppies and diarrhea. The two things go together quite a lot, as you will probably know. Um, the world is going to rack and ruin, but that is no matter because uh, we've got puppies and we're going to be fine. OK, so we are going to have half an hour and we're going to look at uh, aspects of, of uh, keeping puppies healthy where it comes to gut and diet. And that's how we're going to 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 play this evening. OK, uh, everybody's here. Julie Arnold is here. K Karen Mikomon Mikimom is here. Karen, you're very welcome. Uh, Julie Dennis and Nikki Grant are here. It's great to see you guys. I hope you can hear me. I'm assuming you can hear me. Uh, Rosie is 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 uh, organising things, and she's going to tell me if she can hear me. I hope so, because I've got this enormous microphone in front of me, and uh, hopefully that's working. Uh, that's fine. She says. Rosie says yes. So we're all good, guys. Really lovely to see you. Thank you for coming along. So without any further ado, I think let's dive into uh, uh, some, some, I've got some nice photos for you. Um, some people say, oh, I like watching your shows, Nick, because I can have my dinner while I watch them. But on this particular one, I've been very careful with the, with the photos that I've selected. I absolutely promise, because I realize some people will be dipping into their uh, into their chicken chow mein or their their, their uh, vegetarian uh, shepherd's pie or whatever it might be. So don't worry, you're going to be safe because uh, uh, when you're talking about worms and puppies and things like that, 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 that there are those rich pickings for very gruesome photos, but I'm not going to show any of those. It's all fairly easy. And if you've got kids and they're still up, mine are in bed hopefully by now, uh, uh, this is a great thing to talk talk to the kids about. It's it's a fairly simple seminar, um, so if you want to uh, go through it with your kids, that'd be really really great. Um, yeah, why not? Let's get them into into their their puppies early so that they can learn a lot to be learned for the children, and you know a lot of life lessons to be learned through caring for puppies as well. There we go. Enough, enough, enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to put up the show there. go i'm back here here we go i'm just going to change things a tiny bit okay so so uh they say go the screen but no no uh no volume but can we screen is frozen we lost you says love marketplace carol great stuff thank you no sound are we back do we have do we have audio we're back okay you know what I think we're going to do? Thanks for bearing with me, by the way, guys. 
I think what we might do is try and keep it all on the one screen because it might even for my super duper broadband here. I'm going to go up on the broadband there and I'm going to let's go. Um, let's try this now. Let's try this where I'm in the corner. OK, and we'll try that. And I'm going to say so that's my second slide. First slide there. Do you like the teddy bear, by the way? So, Rosie, just confirm that you can see that, and you, we've got uh, we've got some audio as well. Uh, hopefully, we've got uh, uh, visual and audio. Um, good, Rosie says yes. Right, we're good to go. Right, I'm going to ignore all technical <laughs> all technical stuff now, and hopefully, there you go. And I'm in the corner, and you can see everything up there. Uh, if I was pointing in the right direction. Okay, so today, what are we going to do? We're going to look at the main causes. I mean, there's a thousand things that can cause um, diarrhea in puppies, but let's just look at the common ones, that the ones that you're going to see most frequently. Okay, if you want to get a veterinary degree, great, go for it. But let's just keep it simple and just keep it manageable for this evening. If you'd like more on this topic, just shout. You just have to talk to the guys at at Vermex and say, "Please tell us more about puppy diarrhea," and we can we can we can roll it out if that's what one does with puppy diarrhea. Okay, so puppy diarrhea causes. We're going to look at food, which is the main cause of puppy diarrhea. Okay, obviously, uh, we're going to look at worms, which is not the main cause, but worms are very important with puppies. Most puppies have worms, and so it's something that we need to talk about when we're talking about gut health. We're going to talk about infections because they are a serious cause of diarrhea in puppies, and we have to differentiate them from food issues and worm issues, okay? And then we're going to look at home treatments and what can we do at home with regard to food problems, worm problems, and infections. And then finally, we're going to look at when do you go to the vet? I think this is one of the most crucial things because... It's, it's kind of that, that dividing line of uh, uh, I'd, I'd really like idiot-proof guidelines of when I'm okay to just fiddle with things at home and when should I really be calling the vet, okay? So that's I'm going to make that crystal clear through the talk, but we're also going to really, really emphasize it towards the end of the end of the show as well. So here we go. So... Puppy diarrhea, food. So puppy arrives eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, and they are on the food from the breeder. They're probably weaned. Well, they're obviously weaned from mum. And with a bit of luck, they'll be eating a really good diet. For me, the, the optimal, the best, the very, very best way of feeding puppies is with raw food. Now, okay, I'm the, the guy, I'm the, the, the raw food guy, and I love feeding raw. But you know what? 28 years in veterinary medicine, and I don't talk about raw food lightly. It's because it is the best route to healthy pups, healthy gut that I have found. And I've looked at every method known to man i promise you okay so if you're at all thinking about what shall i feed the pup or you're at all interested in raw food do look further and and really really go for it okay really look into it you can ring up any of the food companies and talk to them and they will guide you through it or you can there are raw uh, raw feeding vets if you go to the raw feeding veterinary society rfvs.info just put it into google uh, Raw Feeding Veterinary Society. We've got a big list of, of, of vets around the country who will be able to help you with all of that stuff. Okay, enough about raw food. So, um, so regardless of what 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 your puppy is on when they come from the breeder, hopefully they're not on. I've seen you know Weetabix, you know milk and Weetabix for breakfast, and and then mashed up this that and the other for lunch, and then a little bit of you know pedigree chum for, for tea sort of thing yeah. when they're when they're eight to ten twelve weeks they should be eating really well maybe four times a day a a a, a really good well-balanced uh complete 
meal. Should it be a puppy meal? If they're on raw, not necessarily, but if they're eating a a, a, a tint or a kibbled food, then best going for a, a, a puppy a puppy type formulation. Okay, just to make sure that your calcium and phosphorus, for example, are in are in good shape and that the calories are in in good shape. So, um, if you are looking to change the dog's diet, let's say, for example, you your the dog comes on kibble, which is really common, and you want to change to either uh, a proprietary cooked product, for example, different dog, or uh, a raw food diet. And there are there are many available. You just put the names, put raw feeding pups into Google, and the manufacturers will, will, will pop out who, who who supply frozen raw food. Okay, so transitions. There are three major ways. We went through this yesterday with Carla Pearson, actually. So if you go to Holistic Vet Limited Facebook group and have a look at last night's um, Facebook Live. We went through lots of detail on, on the options. But in a nutshell, the options for transitioning puppy, if you want to change the diet, and I reckon most people change the diet within the first week or two, and that will cause diarrhea in some pups. If you change to raw, that will often not cause diarrhea. Can't guarantee it, but it will often not cause. If you're changing to other things, it can do. So the transitions, number one transition, and I'll show you in a second, Bluebell doing the number one transition, which is just overnight. You just say, right, you're here now, and this is your new food. And if, you, if you're going raw, that's often a very good option. The second way of doing it is to go uh, on the, uh, leave them a day or two to settle on whatever the food, the, the breeder uh, gave them. And then on the first day, you give a quarter of the new food, three quarters of the old food, and then the next day you go half and half and then the third day you go three quarters and a quarter and the fourth day you're on the new food and you can do that for any food you can go from wet to dry uh dry to wet uh tins to raw or whatever you fancy that is that's that's really one of the easiest if you're having real problems and they're really not that they're really quite fussy or you're not feeling comfortable, you can stretch that four days into seven or 10 or 14 days. Okay. So that's, that's okay. Really. It's just a kind of a gradual weaning, weaning process from, uh, uh, food a onto food B. If in doubt, talk to the vet, they will guide you. If you want to go raw, talk to a, uh, an experienced raw feeding vet. Okay. Um, this is good. So, um, the diets that are available to, for the puppy are you can feed raw, as I've just said. If you'd like a kind of a, 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 a quick run through raw food, not necessarily for puppies, but but just, you know, oh, gosh, what is this thing we call raw food? Then have a look. I've done a Vimeo video, Vimeo. So you go to Vimeo, the website called Vimeo, and you put in raw feeding the basics in the search and bing my video will pop out of there and you can help yourself. And that will give you an hour and a half of 10 short lessons on how to do raw feeding. It's really pretty simple. And um, uh, once you get it, it's yours for life. So quite, quite good value, I think. Okay, so uh, raw feeding, I think is great. Not everybody's cup of tea, should be, but it's not everybody's cup of tea. The Next option is a proprietary cooked, and as I say, different dog are my favorite company for that. You, there's also a company called Butternut Box, but uh, as I say, my my favorite uh, proprietary frozen quality uh, uh, um, cooked food, I would, I would be talking to the guys at different dog. Um, tins and kibble, if you go to your vet and you have a, a nutrition conversation with your vet or your vet nurse, they will be talking about tins and um, and uh, just making sure that we're good on the uh, uh, that uh, Rosie's happy. Yeah, she's happy. Um, they'll they'll be talking to you about kibble. They'll be talking to to you about tins. And if you want to go down that line, then I completely respect that. Um, if that's what you want to do, okay. So. Um, Oh, this is this is so this <laughs> this is Bluebell. She's now 18 months old. This is her when she first arrived within 20 minutes of coming through the door. Last June. Uh, was it last June? 
March. Yeah, yeah. So uh, no, it was two years ago. Okay, because she'll be two uh, in April this year. So this is her within twenty minutes of coming through the door, and this is her a fine example of of the uh, cold turkey transition. She was on uh, James Well Well Beloved from the uh, from the breeder who has since turned to raw, um, but she was on James Well Beloved. Um, from the breeder and she came in and within 20 minutes this was her here we go i'll show you i hope you can hear that here she is <laughs> so tiny with enormous feet look at that falling over she can't believe what's in the bowl yeah so there you go um little love yeah with her grubby yellow uh, 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 collar because she's been scrapping with her brothers and sisters uh, and to differentiate her from her brothers and sisters there you go so that's that's how you do it if you're a lazy vet and <laughs> you just, we just put the food down and she went for it and off we went um, she's, she, since then she's kind of fussy about some manufacturers uh, raw food and she likes other manufacturers but that's that's just the way of it and we, we we just go with that and that's 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 an okay thing just to say that's her now she was pretending she was in vogue one frosty morning um she's looking lovely she's she's coming up for two years old now and she's absolutely beautiful um okay uh causes of diarrhea number two worms worms are not up are, are, are 100 to 1 ratio uh, if you've got a squitty puppy it's it's 100 times more likely to be food than it is to be worms but you know worms can disrupt the gut the reason that that worms don't cause so much of a problem is is because most breeders are really hot on worming okay they will they will use drontel or or one of the or panicure or one of the the other uh, conventional wormers and they'll, they'll do that every two weeks until it comes to you very 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 frequently um, we will talk about uh, worming and, 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 and what your options are in a bit so the worms that, that pups get they get roundworms from mum uh, larvae migrate in mum's body to the mammary tissue and will will go whoosh, pop into the pup um, and so virtually all pups have some degree of worms by the time they get to you at 8 10 12 weeks they may not have worms because the breeder if they're half decent will have will have used uh, uh, one product or another and so they might not have worms with you in which case you can do a worm count um, but around worms are really the ones that you want to look for you may not see if they're really fine they're like hairs um, but some of the bigger ones are, are are really quite visible, kind of spaghetti-like things. You, you, you're not, you're unlikely to see that level of of, of worm, to be quite honest. Take worms; uh, they look like kind of like um, there's a pasta. You know, the pasta that's that's about a quarter of an inch wide and is kind of flat. They kind of look like like that. Some some take worms can look like grains of rice. And they're associated with fleas. They don't give you fleas uh, per se unless they're actually infected with with, with uh, the, the flea larvae. But um, if you find those, you've got to think fleas as well. Um, they put called dipalidium. Um, so roundworms and tapeworms, but roundworms are the main ones that we need to be aware of and and and. Uh, either be monitoring or treating or both um, what are the signs of of worms in pups um, scooting is common where they go scooting on their bums um, a pot belly like this little chap here um, if you noticed bluebell just then at her uh, the stainless steel bowl um, she had a it wasn't a pot belly but she had a bit of a belly I think all puppies have a bit of a belly because they're trying to ingest loads of food. But uh, when you actually see some degree of pot belly like that, you you may have worms. And so uh, monitoring or treatment or calling the vet is, is a good idea. If you actually see spaghetti coming out of their bums, then you've got a really, really quite a serious problem. That will be veterinary 
in, in, in the veterinary sphere, and I would definitely give the, the vets a buzz for that. You might see nothing. If you're a very wise parasite, you do not let on that you are in town, and therefore you may not see anything at all. You can't tell whether your dog or your pup has got worms unless you test. And I think testing for worms is a great idea, just, just as teeter testing, blood testing for vaccines is a great idea to find out whether you need a vaccine or not for the pup uh, or for the for the adult dog. Equally, testing the uh, the stool for the presence of worms, I think, is, is a very valuable, uh, very valuable um, piece of information so that you can make decisions, make really, you know, wise decisions as to how to how to worm. So infections. Now, um, the, the, the common infections that we see, basically, these are, these are kind of either bacterial or protozoal. A, 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 a protozoa is just a kind of a, a really big, meaty bacterium. Um, Giardia and Campylobacter are the common ones. Uh, e. coli and Salmonella are the bacterial infections. And um, they, will, they will just cause sick puppies and, and squitty, horrible uh, um, um, stool um the signs that we'd be looking for would be either okay pup but really not very nice stool uh you know they may you may have changing color think of a color it could be that color um it could be a foul smell it might be that the the, the the pup is looking uncomfortable and a bit of belly ache um or or straining uh, really, anything that doesn't look normal is possibly uh, a, a sign of infection. The puppy itself may be hot. Feel the feel the ears. Are they are they feeling hot? If you can take a temperature, then carefully do. But you know, if you're in that kind of area with the pup, I think we're we're looking at going to see the vet. Um, if the puppy is inappetent for no good reason, if they, they're fluffy and um, not very happy for no good reason, then um, I think really we are in the realm of calling the vet would be a good idea. And they'll probably say, yeah, it's a puppy, maybe dehydrated, come down and see us. Even during COVID, these would be uh, situations where they would say, right, bring the pup to us because pups, although really pretty resilient and really pretty tough they can dehydrate quite quickly if they have got a diarrhea situation however i will say if you've got a pup and they're bright and well and they've got a bit of diarrhea then i really wouldn't worry that that's one of the differentiating factors if you've got a bright and chirpy pup who's got a decent uh, appetite and good vitality then you've got a lot more uh, scope to think, shall we go to the vet or shall we not? If you've got a dull and floppy and not very happy puppy, it, there's no question, <laughs> get to the vet, okay? It's as simple as that. So, food, worms, and infections. Those are the main reasons why we think of, 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 of pups having diarrhea. But what can we do about that? So, let's have a look. So, what can we do about food? So the first thing would be if your if the pup has come and they're a little bit loose, even from the from the um, from the breeder, they may have got upset with, with with the weaning, or they may be upset at missing mum and their brothers and sisters, or they may be upset at the car ride or something, and that may have just you know upset them. And um, in which case moving to raw will often do the trick if you want to add a little bit extra even if you're not feeding raw then the extras uh, you can get slippery elm from the health food shop or from um from other suppliers uh marshmallow root powder is very good as well uh, in the old days we used to starve but starving puppies maybe not such a great idea Stephen starving uh, older older animals, uh, adult dogs, we don't really do it these days because we now know that enterocytes, the lining of your gut, they're very, they need a continual supply of nutrients. And so starving uh, is, is not so good. So if, if, if you're looking to modify the diet in some way, you're looking for a very bland 
diet so if, you, if you're on raw and you're feeding a bit of this and about a bit of that and a bit of this and a bit of that just go to what you know to be very very bland for that pup would be a good idea and i would not make that chicken or beef i would make it either uh, turkey or fish or something like that that would be where i would go yeah in the old days chicken and rice was the default way to treat but that's really not the way to go nowadays i think um turkey or fish with a little bit of green veg or quinoa or amaranth or buckwheat or something like that that would be just for a few days just to, to, to settle even lightly cooked okay even the raw guy is saying even lightly cooked would be okay if you if you would like bone broth is a wonderful thing to give to puppies with diarrhea whether they're on raw or cooked or 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 kibble uh bone broth basically you get your bones from beef animal or from lamb bones or chicken wings or whatever it is and you cook for eight hours you boil them up big big pot boil, boil them for eight hours put the lid on so it doesn't boil dry and thus you have bone broth which is which is uh appetizing hydrating uh delicious and uh very nutritious for the pup so you can't go wrong buy some, uh, uh, make some of that from the up from the off you can buy it but you know it's so easy to make why would you want to to to, to pay m people money for something that you can do for tub and safety okay um if the pup is diarrheic as i say you can feed some cooked food uh white fish or turkey would be where i would go there and i would do probably 80 percent meat and just a little bit of um very finely um chopped lightly steamed greens okay it sounds like a french restaurant but actually it's quite easy to do and that's how you do it you can even blitz the the greens and put those in just for a little bit of fiber a little bit of uh, prebiotic again remember your slippery elm or marshmallow root powder you can get combinations of those two as as prebiotics you can use probiotics um uh probiotics uh i would say um a bit of goat's yogurt uh is is often very useful um you can get um probiotic pastes from your pet shop or from your vet and they can be useful at the practice here we use fido spore f-i-d-o-s-p-o-r-e which is which is a nice probiotic product um as i say chicken and rice that's when i was in back in the day that's that was the default position when there was any upset stomach but we're not that keen on it these days kibble and tins if you go to the vet and you the puppy is loose they will uh, uh from their, their paradigm that that's completely uh le le legitimate and logical thing to do they will offer you a an intestinal um kibble or tinned diet that's that's how they play that one and again if your puppy is having problems with the diet but they're bright and they're well then uh, uh you know try other other foods uh other feeding um regimes um if the puppy is sick then really think uh we might we, we, we maybe we should go to to the vets okay um worms so if puppy has worms you have got to do something about it apart from anything else some of the round um, roundworms are zoonotic that is they can be passed on to you or your children so if puppy does have worms you've got to do something about it as a a veterinary surgeon i am obliged to tell you about the pharmaceuticals uh and they are the drontal pluses the milben maxes the panicures of this world if in doubt talk to your vet and they will guide you with the use of these products um if you make an active decision not to use those products and if you've got a sick puppy you've got to be pretty careful about that but if you've got a you know the puppy's well and you've done a a, a, a worm count and you found that the uh, there's just you know some some evidence of some worms and you'd rather not use a pharmaceutical then 
Firmex, who sponsored this show, um, is a great choice. I've been working with them for years, and I'm very happy to to, to use these types of products. And um, so Vermex is great. Sometimes I'll use uh, diatomaceous earth type products. It's all it's written there for you, so you don't need to write it down. You can always go back and 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 look. You can get it on Amazon or from your health food shop, and that is basically worms really don't like diatomaceous earth it's a silicaceous silicaceous um very finely divided silica silicate uh, product and it gets into the worm the uh the, the skin the membrane of the worms and they don't like it and uh disrupt them um so those are non-pharmaceutical options that you can uh discuss with your vet. Um, I think worm counting is a great idea. When I was first in practice, it was absolutely true that every single puppy had worms. Nowadays though, because I do lots of worm counting these days, not every puppy does have worms. Um, in the old days, when puppy came to, uh, to the owner at eight, 10, 12 weeks, they, uh, they might still have worms. Now, whether that's because the breeder was a bit slack or because the puppy was really, really stuffed with worms and the treatments that they had weren't enough, who knows? But um, nowadays, when I do worm counts on, on pups at 10 weeks, say 12 weeks, then I will quite often find that they are negative for for worms, in which case one can, if one is careful, and one tests every two, three, four weeks uh, until they're six months old, then sometimes one can reduce the amount of pharmaceutical product that one uses. If you want to be uh, to go belt and braces, then you can use, say, Vermex in the background for improving gut health and improving microbiome as well so there's 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 quite a lot to be said for uh these these herbal type products i feel uh and infections okay infection is quite an easy one because if if they've got an infection they'll probably be not really very well not always but they will probably be quite sick and therefore it's a vet job um if they have an infection and they're okay in themselves, but just the diarrhea just drags on. Whatever you feed the dog, they have a diarrhea, then it may well be independent of the food, and it might be the bug which is irritating the, the, the gut, which is causing the diarrhea, in which case you can feed what you like, you're never gonna get on top of it, and you, you'll need to get a diagnosis and get some treatment from the vet. Um, again, if, you, if you've got a persistent diarrhea with a bright pup, um, then we're in vet territory there. If you see horrendous diarrhea, I think you know everybody's reaction will be crumbs. What is that? Let's get to the vet. Okay. Uh, Parvo, just for the record, Parvo looks like thick clotted port, as in port wine, uh, and it smells like death. It smells absolutely horrible. Okay, so it's not subtle. If you have even the slightest inkling of dark, bloody, like loads of dark, bloody diarrhea, then do not pass go. Do not collect £200 and go straight to the vet. Uh, actually, during COVID, you want to call them first because of distancing and all that stuff. OK, but if you see horrible port wine type foul smelling diarrhea then straight on to the vet if in doubt with any diarrhea call the vet i think is a great idea um so just to re-emphasize and i'm not drumming up business for my colleagues i'm trying to keep puppies i'm trying a i'm trying to keep puppies safe and b i'm trying to keep you away from vets when you don't need to be at the vets okay so i am on your side i promise okay um when to go to the vet so if you've got a sick puppy and you, you you've changed the diet and 
if you've got a sick puppy and you are just unsure what to do, I think call the vet. If you've got an okay puppy, yeah, they're bright, they're eating and what have you, but the, the persistent, you know, any symptom that persists, then I think we go to the vet or at least call the vet because of COVID. Uh, and that's really, really wise. Um, so if the puppy's okay, but the symptoms persist, persist, or if you just can't understand what on earth is going on, then go to vet because it may be, he says, looking for a pen. Let me, let me find my laser pointer. As with this clever puppy, ate a fork, okay? Like I said, just at the beginning, there are many reasons why your pup may have intestinal issues. I have covered with you just now probably 80, 90% of puppies, okay? So it's likely that you're going to be in those. But there are the ones who, where something else is going on, okay? They, they've swallowed a, a fork. They've swallowed, I've actually dug a, uh, a needle and thread out of a, out of a dog before. It looked fantastic on x-ray, opened the dog up, and there it was, needle and thread. Kate took it out, sewed up the gut. Dog was happy as Larry. Um, so puppies eat funny things. Um, and so if in doubt, I think I think the best thing to do is to, to just play it safe and, and, and nip off. Uh, I was going to say, in, in the old days, it was you just go to the vet. But now, ring the vet. If in doubt, ring the vet. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so questions. So will this show the puppy? Yes. Here we go. I hope you can see this. This is this is Bluebell's uh, Bluebell's sister, and this is Shelley, the breeder, who's now feeding raw, who is super delighted with and with with feeding the pups raw. And that I think is her sister. She's called Mouse. We're going to call her Mouse. She's got kind of diamond on her. I think that's her. Forgive me, Mouse, if it's not her, you. Um, yeah, so Shelly's now feeding this lot with raw food, and they're doing great. Uh, and she is, Shelly, the breeder, is absolutely cock hoot and we're going to go and pick up the pup on, um, on, on Sunday. So... There you go. Um, guys, that's us, a little bit of puppiness for you. Um, let me come back to there and go like this. And there you go. That's me in the stream once again. Okay, fab. Great. Thanks for bearing with me. So let's have a look at some uh, questions. Let me grab a pen. My social prop, even when I'm here alone in the in the in my office, it's nice to have a little social prop. So um, here we go. Leanne, uh, just taking these at random. Leanne says, "Hi, Leanne. My puppy has had loose stools since worming on Sunday evening. Is it normal for that to happen after treatment? It can do, and it's either because pup had worms." And they're kind of just coming out and that's just um, irritating gut a tiny bit or it could be the active ingredient within the wormer depending on what the pharmaceutical was used or some of these wormers actually have flavorings and other uh, they call them excipients i.e stuff that they put in beside the active ingredient to kind of make it look good or colorful or something like that and it can be that now what will normally happen will be that if you feed a bland diet, if you're on raw, then just go for something really bland um, like uh, fish or turkey or whatever it might be for that particular puppy, go bland for three to five days and that will often see them right. A little bit of slippery elm goes a long way. That's really good. Uh, a bit of kefir can be helpful for, as a probiotic. Um, uh, equally goat yogurt uh, if they can tolerate that then that can be quite probiotic um, we use phytospore as I say as a probiotic to just kind of settle settle the gut so Leanne see how you go 
uh, with that, I hope that's I hope that's uh, potentially useful. So uh, Sarah, Sarah is saying, how are we doing for time? Whoa, way over. Apologies, guys, but hopefully you're enjoying this as much as I am. I am quite enjoying it, actually. Okay. Um, uh, Sarah says, could raw food such as raw meat get the puppy's worm infections? No. Great question. Categorically, no. And the reason I can say categorically, I don't say that very often in veterinary medicine, but I can say categorically because uh, if the food you're feeding has been frozen, that will kill all worms and worm larvae. OK, so uh, if you're buying good quality uh, frozen product, either from the, your, your, your local independent retailer, which is a good place to buy your raw food from or from pets at home, or for, you're ordering it from the from the raw food manufacturer. Um, it will have been frozen for uh, you know some considerable time, more than uh, two to seven days, and therefore no worms whatsoever. And it will also eliminate Campylobacter. Okay, which is very reassuring. Okay, great question, Sarah. Good, good, good. Um, uh, uh, Irene says, yep, yeah, very rightly. Make sure the, the diatomaceous earth is food grade diatomaceous earth. Uh, basically, you can get commoner garden diatomaceous earth, but it's it's so it, it can be very, very fine and you can breathe it in and it's not so good. It won't kill you immediately, but not great. If you get food grade, they've got rid of the really fine particles, and so it's less likely to cause any respiratory issues to you or, or the pup um we uh, let's have a look uh okay let's have a look uh okay let's 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 dive deep here ahmed says uh what's the mechanism of vermex on the gt that is a big 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 question because the there are there are more than 10 herbs within uh, vermex and they uh, uh, and uh, herbs have well documented effects on 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 uh, microbiome on gut health on 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 worms directly as well so we've got these three major mechanisms if you go to pubmed if you're Sounds like you might be an academic. Um, if you go to PubMed and you look, you look at uh, worms and herbs. You do a search, then you'll find. I think the last time I did it was about forty-two thousand papers uh, looking at, at at the effects of uh, herbs within the gut. So that's a simple question, but an enormous. I could do, I could do a day seminar on on something similar. Um, very happy to to go further with you ahmed if you would like to talk further okay um let's have a look julie julie sands can you use vermex at eight weeks of it yeah you can use it from three or four weeks of age okay i use the i use the liquid i like the liquid really well it's well tolerated um it's really easy to use and um the the, the standard dosing is three days per month with vermex but if you want to just step it up a tiny bit, you can just go three days every fortnight. Uh, if you just you know just want to be be uh, absolutely sure. But remember, um, worm counts are incredibly useful when one is monitoring pups or adult dogs with uh, uh, when, when with with a view to understanding the, the what's happening from a worm wormy perspective. Okay, um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, pleasure, Ahmed. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. Last one. Let's go. Uh, I don't want to bore you. Uh, Krina, Krina says, my dog has had diarrhea since we've had her. She is now twelve months. Aha! Great. I'm glad I uh, got this question. We've had numerous tests, which have come back. Uh, with she has giardia and salmonella which she was treated for okay so if she's been 
treated for those, you need to have retest to make sure that those two things have gone. What they usually do for salmonella is nothing because if you treat it with antibiotics, you can get a persistent salmonella status, which is not great. That means your dog is persistently spewing salmonella at the back end, which is not healthy for humans, obviously. Uh, Giardia-wise, it's usually best to get rid of that. Um, and you can use things like Panicure is the licensed product for that. Uh, you need to get rid of it, basically. And, and, and if the first treatment doesn't do it, then persist and do that. But at the same time, from a more holistic perspective, I think really be looking at the quality of the diet. For me, obviously, I go raw. I would go with a non-chicken and a non-beef um, offering uh, for weeks and weeks. Um, and I would be looking to boost the microbiome and therefore I think some um, either soil born organisms in uh, uh, Kiki Kiki Health do a, a probiotic, but also we are using Phytospore at the uh, at the practice here. But you'll you'll find even using uh, things like Vermix that has a a toning effect on the gut as well. So that might be part of. Uh, part of the solution so Krina hope that's useful if you're having problems um, I, I I would suggest maybe go to the raw feeding veterinary society website and maybe try and find a, a raw feeding vet they might be able to just get you over over that hump so uh, Rosie has said would you mind let me have a look Rosie very organized Rosie uh, would you mind asking uh, anyone who has a question that wasn't answered to message the Vermex page with it. So, guys, it's very good, um, uh, very good point. So, uh, there are lots and lots and lots of, of, of questions there. Thank you, really appreciate it. Um, I can't answer them all, obviously. Um, so, if you've got a question, a burning question, then get on to the guys at Vermex. Um, um, if you just Google Vermex, it will come up Verm hyphen X, V E R N hyphen X. And then uh, Rosie and Cheryl and the uh, lovely people there will be able to organize some questions. And if they can't answer them, then they will pass them to me and I'll have a go at answering them for you. Okay. Um, yeah, there you go. That's what she's saying. So, guys, there we go. Really, really good. Um, in uh, two weeks' time, we're going to be talking about um, uh, scaly leg and in poultry and mites and skin parasites in poultry, which is going to be really exciting. Uh, genuinely, I think, it, it, wait till we see the mechanisms. It's brilliant. Uh, we're going to be doing that. So if that's your cup of tea, come along with us to that 8 o'clock Thursday um i can even i'll even give you a date here we go uh what will that be uh come on yeah it will be uh skin mites in poultry and pets is the official title and that's thursday the 21st of january uh eight o'clock on the vermex uh page with me the gut doctor is what they call me nick thompson that um i hope that's useful guys um come back and see us for more uh i hope you keep well keep 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 your chin up in these trying times i'm going to go now and look forward to seeing you in a fortnight uh on the vermex facebook page thanks for thanks for being with us <laughs>